pattern readers. Welcome back to Reading the Pattern. In case you don't remember, I'm Rebecca. It has been a long time since I've made a video. I do want to give you a few updates on me and the channel, but first let's talk about what this video is going to be. I am going to be ranking something that I do not usually do. All of the news and updates we have gotten on season two of The Wheel of Time. So it's going to be an excellent roundup of everything we know about season two and a reminder of how much promo we have gotten and we have not entered the major marketing push yet. And I'll talk about maybe what to expect from that major marketing push, which I'm hoping is not too far away. But if you're not interested in any of the updates on this channel, reading the pattern, and you just want to skip right to the wheel of time stuff, go ahead and skip to this timestamp. Okay. So obviously this channel has been something that I have had to back burner for several months. And a lot of that was due to personal stuff. I got very burnt out over the winter. Since the beginning of the year, I've been working on a lot of things in my personal life. And some of that has been good, like a new job and new personal goals. And there has been a lot of stress too. And I just could not executive function my way into making videos. I have a new setup in which I'm hoping will make things easier and that I will find more motivation to make content as we hopefully get closer to the wheel of time season two. I won't make any firm predictions for how often I'm going to put out content. I will just say that I'm going to do my best. So that said, if you enjoy the work that I do and you don't want to miss anything I do put out, the best thing to do would be to subscribe and turn on notifications. So why do I think we might be getting somewhat closer to season two? Two reasons, basically. First is that I don't think Amazon is going to give us a very long heads up for the season two release date. They generally don't. So I think it's very reasonable that we may only find out the release date about one month ahead of time. I honestly think two months is max. The other reason I think we may be getting a little closer is that we're starting to see actors update their CVs with their actual roles. So there's some chance that they may have been cleared to do so. That's very speculative. I could turn out to be very wrong, but for now let's clown and let's get to that season two wheel of time news roundup. You should expect spoilers from promotional materials for season two of the wheel of time show and some spoilers through book three, the dragon reborn. Okay. Because it took me so long to finish editing this video. We actually got some new news since I filmed this and because of that, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to put this new information in the number zero spot because I don't want to completely rework this video and recency bias. So we got a really good look at some Aiel characters. We already knew Ayula Smart is playing Avienda and we've gotten glimpses of her, but this is the first really good look and some new confirmed castings. Maya Simonson is playing Chiad and Raga Ragnars is playing Bane, her first sister and fellow Maiden of the Spear. We get to see the three of them doing maiden hand talk, a version of sign language that was developed for the show. To go along with this, showrunner Rafe Judkins confirmed that they'll be fully exploring the Aiyo culture in the show, including all the familiar book elements like Jiato and Gaishane. I thought all of the details in these costumes looked amazing, and it was just really thrilling to see these three actors in their roles. We don't get a lot of sneak peeks like this, and it was really special. Rafe did a lot of teasing about this set that he was sitting on, talking about it being an iconic location from the books, featured heavily in season two and a little bit in season three. And he talked about all the costume changes, blood and water and all kinds of crazy filming that went on there. It was a huge tease. There's tons of implications to this, and I'm pretty sure it needs a separate video to talk about. So stay tuned. Another confirmed cast member, Jay Duffy is going to be playing Dane Bornhold. And it was lovely to hear him talk about how excited he is to play this role, how complex and conflicted a character Dane Bornhold is. Rima Tewiata is playing Sheriam Bayanar, Mistress of Novices. The actress put together this wonderfully, delightfully offbeat video, and I'm already just so much more interested in this character. We also got a lot of fan questions answered by cast and Rafe was kind enough to confirm that we are going to get the character of Elida by choosing her as the character he's most excited to see introduced. Sarah Nakamura, who works as the book expert on the show, also confirmed something that fans have been wondering about, which is that Saidar and Saideen and the differences between them are going to be explored more in season two. We also learned that the Shan Chan accent isn't going to be exactly Texan, but they did use the way it was described in the books to try to develop 
develop what we see on screen. There were also a ton of lovely answers from various actors about their characters and teasing us about different scenes. And I think I'm going to save the breakdown of that for another video. Number 10 on my list is going to be a big roundup of casting information. Although some of the bigger ones and the officially confirmed ones are gonna come in higher on this list. All of the actors that I'm including at the number 10 spot have not been officially confirmed, but they, a lot of them have some other confirmation, whether it was the actor themselves mentioning it or putting it on their CVs, etc. Some of them are just strongly suspected due to sleuthing done by WattSeries.com. We pretty much have WattSeries to thank for all of this information. Ari, Sarah, Omar, Lane, you're all wonderful people and amazing contributors to the Wheel of Time fandom. So the first few actors that I'm going to mention do include ones that are still technically speculation, but Watt series track record is excellent, and I suspect they are accurate. Adrian Boucher, Natasha Jaya Hendry, Bentley Kalu, and child star legend Haley Mills. Next, we have Jessica Boone, who we have some reason to believe might be playing a Sean Chan character because she was seen with the side of her head shaved around the time she would have been filming. Loup Nakur confirmed on Twitter in August 2022 that she had what she called a tiny part in the second season of The Wheel of Time, said it was an amazing experience, and confirmed that she filmed in Italy. We don't know who Zelia Mendez Jones will be playing, but I definitely feel they're among the most speculated about so far. Move over Steve. Jonathan Hawkins listed his role as Brian. Good luck keeping your scenes in the show, buddy. Similarly, Rachel Denning's role was listed as Naomi, Dara O'Toole as Jan, and Laia Costa as Magdalena. Finally, we get to some characters we can actually place within the world of The Wheel of Time. Stuart Kenneth Moore and Laura Crowhurst are both playing stable masters. We already knew season two is going to Kyrian, but just in case you aren't sure, Vincent Kirschbaum is playing a Sun Palace servant. Ken Bradshaw is playing Asan Sander, who is a Kyrian and guard in the books and Will Tudor is playing Lord Barthanis. We expect to see Melissa James as Nynaeve's mother, Elnor, either in a flashback or in Nynaeve's accepted test. Michael Amariah is playing a Gleeman, and we will get to meet Min's two aunts, played by Yuri Yamanaka and Haruka Kuroda. Of course, there's going to be some Shan Chan characters, starting with Elena Fokina, who is playing a Suldam, and Lily Banda, who is playing Lulane, who runs the Damani Quarters in Falm. Based on appearance, it looks like Karima McAdams is playing this Shan Chan character, who, best guess, is most likely High Lady Surath. And Daniel Francis is playing High Lord Turok. And we can't overlook the White Tower, where Raquel Cipriano is playing a novice, and Sal Soleil is playing a character named Elsa Treehill, most likely another novice character who's a composite between Elsa Grinwell and Nicola Treehill. Marie-France Alvarez is playing Celestine, an Aes Sedai of the Yellow Aja. And Katie Leong is playing Yasika, an Aes Sedai of the Brown Aja. Number nine on this list comes in as low as it does because it's kind of a disappointing update. We have confirmation that Tom Marilyn will not appear in season two, although we do expect his actor, Alexander Valam, to resume the role for season three. I, for one, was hoping for some Matt and Tom shenanigans in season two. Hopefully that will still come eventually, even if we have to wait for it. Number eight, were the appearances of Donald Finn, Kira Kovny, and Kate Fleetwood at CCXP in Brazil to promote season two and talk about their characters. This appearance didn't really give us any new content, but it was really lovely to see these three lovely people talking about their characters, talking about their excitement for being in a long running show. That was the part that I think was most encouraging to me is the hope that they all have and share with us that this show will be long running and the development that we'll get to see for these characters over time and the layers they'll get to explore is really exciting. And of course, you get a little bit more view of two new actors, Donald Finn and Kira Kovny, who we're all very excited for and looking forward to seeing finally on screen. Number seven are two sets of audition scripts discovered by WattSeries.com. I feel like these have been mostly forgotten, but there was some really interesting stuff in them. There's hints about Gowan's relationship with his brother, his sister, his mother, and even Maureen. Most interesting to me was this bit where he talked about how his mother had compared him to Shamael, 
a man who needed others to be weak in order to be strong. So that's just a fascinating insight into a direction his character might take in the show. And then we have two scenes between Avienda and Perrin, which show that they're going to explore that dynamic a bit more in the show. And I love in particular how they're going to use Avienda to help Perrin deal with his grief and guilt over Layla. And it makes a lot of sense for her as a character who is a female warrior to take on that role. Number six was this season two rap video. Compared to some sneak peeks we got later, there's not nearly as much revealed here, but there were still some tantalizing hints, especially at the time. We get to see the giant wheel that would show up again later, Yosha being picked up and slammed down by a stunt person, and even an actress that we would later identify as Rima Te'iwiata, who was playing Shiriam. This was the first glimpse of her. At number five, I have another casting roundup. These rank higher either because they've been officially confirmed or because the roles they're playing have the potential to be more significant. Julian Lewis Jones is playing Bale Doman. Gary Beadle is playing Elias. Then we have Arnas Fedaravicius as Masima Dagar, Greg Chilingirian as Ingtar Shinua. And finally, we have two confirmed but unknown roles, Natasha O'Keefe and Mira Sayal. The most commonly speculated roles for Natasha are Elida Sedai, she does look good in red, or Lanfear. And on that second theory, there's some potentially supporting information that happens to be from leaked material. So I am not going to get into that. And it's honestly not definitive either way anyway. As for Mira Sayal, I think I will personally be shocked if she's not playing Varen Sedai of the Brown Aja, but we shall see. At number four, we have the interview that Rafe Jedkins did with Dragon Mount. And I finally get to talk about this. I wanted to do a whole video on this at the time, but it was during my bad time and I didn't. So for now, I'm going to focus on the things he had to say that have an impact on season two. He mentioned that in comparison to season one, season one, they didn't know for sure that they were only going to have eight episodes at first. So their initial plans were for more episodes. Season two, they knew ahead of time how many episodes they would have, which helps them have a firmer plan from the beginning. And also they knew that their episodes could be a little longer, which gave them a little more freedom. He also made a point to emphasize that there is a lot of material of story to cover in season two. And this is not a surprise given that we've known for some time that it's essentially going to cover books two and three. That is a lot. And he talks about how in some cases, in order to tell that story more efficiently, they do have to make more changes. And I know that is something that certain fans don't like to hear. But to put that in perspective, he talks about how in comparison to, let's say, early seasons of Game of Thrones, when they were still adapting source material, they roughly had to adapt about 50 pages per episode. For The Wheel of Time, it's about 100 pages per episode double. And they certainly don't have double the runtime or double the resources or anything along those lines. And of course, no one's looking for two hour episodes. So they just have to work within those constraints. And really, it means they have to be more creative. He brought in a point of agreement that he had with Brandon Sanderson, co-author of the final three books of The Wheel of Time, that books two and three have such a similar narrative structure that there was really no way to adapt those stories back to back, that they had to be combined. Otherwise, it would seem too repetitive in a TV show. It's just something that Robert Jordan was able to get away with in his books that you can't do in a show. And boy, do I feel vindicated because I was saying literally that about these two books like years ago. He used a metaphor I think Tom would approve of. He talked about how at the end of season one, they're sort of starting to juggle all these balls. And in season two, we'll start to see how they land. And then we're again heading towards a closer adaptation of The Shadow Rising in season three. But the path that they need to take to get there may diverge. Honestly, some of my favorite things that he had to say in this interview had more to do with the fandom than the show. But for the purposes of this video, the last thing I wanted to share was something that really stood out to me uh, that he talked about when talking about the themes of the Wheel of Time. He talked about how the Wheel of Time is not trying to chase anything. It's not trying to be the next Game of Thrones. It's trying to be its own forward-thinking thing. And to me, that is very refreshing. Number three, New York Comic Con really brought us so much wonderful new content. 
We had some interviews with existing cast members Marcus Rutherford, Madeline Madden, Daniel Henney, and showrunner Rafe Judkins. These were the first public appearances by new cast members Donald Finn and Kira Kovny, and we got our first glimpse of them in character as Matt and Elaine, and they really both look so perfect for the roles. Unfortunately, there were two sneak peek clips from season two featuring Matt and Elaine that have never been released to the public. And we don't talk about that, Bruno. But we did get to see a sneak peek teaser from season two. And we do talk about that. We learned that this guy right here, at least according to Moraine, not the dark one, but his most powerful lieutenant who's been set free. And he appears to not be alone either. We get some amazing glimpses of the Shan Chan and their gorgeous costumes. We have shirtless Daniel Henney using the sword and Nynaeve using the sword, or at least letting off some steam. Mostly, we see a lot of our characters looking miserable. Really, really miserable. Someone even angered the Ogier, and all of that has nothing on our girl Egwene. Swan is looking pretty good, though. I saved the three biggest cast additions for the number two spot because I am equally excited about all of these characters and literally can't wait to see them on my screen. Donald Finn has taken over the role of Matt Cawthon. Kira Kovny is joining the cast as Elaine Trakand and Ayula Smart as Avienda. The number one spot, of course, had to go to the teaser we got at San Diego Comic-Con and the Q&A that went along with it. I did detailed breakdowns of these before, but for now, a reminder of the highlights. It was a behind the scenes teaser, so a lot of the shots look like this, and it's not a clear look, but it is our first look at Ayula Smart as Avienda, plus two other maidens. A much clearer look at what looks like to be another scary, intense white cloak character. A tantalizing waygate in what looks to be a tropical like location. Very interesting. Lots of cool looks at the set that they appear to be using for foam. I think a lot of stuff is going to go down in Kyrian. Yes, I do think this is in Kyrian. And yes, I do think Moraine and Lan are standing behind Rand in this shot. And yep, I think this is Kyrian too. I think even this shot of Min could be, although wherever it is, I definitely think it's where she meets up with Rand. There's a lot of gorgeous on-location shots that we get to see, including this beach shot of Moraine and Lan. And yet another gorgeous location here. And then there's this. We still have no idea who this person is. I think there's going to be some amazing fight scenes. A Gwaine in Novice White in the White Tower. What looks to be the warder training grounds in the White Tower. And could it be a highly anticipated scene from the Dragon Reborn? Fade on a door. All that needs to be said. Rand looking like he's already going through some stuff. And yes, they definitely want to remind us that we're going to see Daniel Henney practicing the sword shirtless. And of course, the Shan Chan being scary and having amazing costumes. Now I'm going to give you a speed recap of some of Rafe's best answers from his gin and tonic fueled Q&A. They will spend more time with any Forsaken who's in the show, more like later books than books two or three. Rafe's favorite season two two-person scene was Egwene and Renna. We will see the Dark Friend Social and Hopper. Maureen's season two story is much expanded from book two, but built out of that, as well as a couple of relationships that were not explored in the books. With further context, we can say that we will see Falma and Kyrian in season two, unknown about Tyr. They are sticking with the cold opens for each episode, and season two will cover pieces of books one, two, and three. Matt's plot had to change the most compared to the books, but should come back to where it's supposed to be by the end of season two. Moraine and Lan had to be expanded the most because they were certainly not going to put these two amazing actors on the bench. And we may get to see Loyal in a steading. We will have the line, do you like to dance, Paranaibara? As for the number of books that will be covered, large parts of books one through three, although parts of it are still being held for later, and that season three, as previously mentioned, will be a closer adaptation of The Shadow Rising. I want to thank all of you for tuning back into this channel after my long hiatus. And until next time, I think it's fair to say, gird your loins, my friends.